Special guest, Tim Hill. This is the Power Motion Picnic Hour. That's right, everyone. Just like the song says, this is the Power of Motion Picnic Hour. As always, I'm your host, Dave. And as always, handling the other 50% of the hosting duties is Trevor. Oh, Trevor, what's going on? I'm doing great, Dave. How are you? I'm, I'm good. I tried to uh, switch up the intro there a little bit because this is such an extra non-traditional episode. Extra non-traditional, just a, a fabulous and unexpected chat with a musician and avant-garde hiker, Tim Hill. Yeah, that was so cool. That was such a great conversation. Um, our least running-centric discussion yet with our second ever non-runner on the podcast. We even discussed at the start of the episode whether we should try to convince him to run. He not to spoil too much, but he did express an interest in running. And then we quickly moved away from the topic and spent most of our time in other areas. He was in no way resistant to the idea. And after a a slight possible cry for help, we ignored it and then just talked about Brian Eno for 40 minutes. Yes, we, we did. We did have a great conversation though. Um, we will get to some running topics, I believe, either now or or post interview. Um, there are a few a few important running related topics to catch up on, but uh, yeah, that's right. Um, depends kind of how you want to do it. Maybe we should say one piece of of running related discussion off the top, and then go to our interview with Tim. Take a forty minute break from running, and then come back to it and talk running again. All right. Do you have uh, Do you have that news? Well, I have one. I have a correction that we got in the mailbag, actually. Oh, excellent. Um, let me, where is this correction? I got to pull it up. We got a correction. So last week we talked about um, through hiking. And I asked what through hiking is. And uh, I don't remember who defined it, whether it was you or, or Chad, but our cor- the correction and the correct definition of through hiking is uh, the term is used in contrast to section hiking when talking about long distance trails. Appalachian, Pacific Crest, Long, etc. Someone who through hikes does it all in one go. Someone who section hikes does a chunk, maybe over a weekend, and then goes back and does more sections at later times. Very interesting. And I would just like to add an immediate correction that when I said we would do one running related topic before going to the interview, that was not even running related. That was hiking related. But (laughs) good clarification of a hiking term. which was referenced by special guest Chad, uh, who who mentioned that through hikers actually performed quite well in the uh, the running race that he recently did, the Cocodona 250. That's right. That ties it all back in. But um, yeah, why 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 try to force it any further? Let's continue this discussion of hiking um, by going to our conversation with musician and hiking enthusiast Tim Hill. Let's do it. This is the Power Motion Picnic Hour. Yeah, yeah, I'm in uh, just south of LA, in the suburbs. Oh, cool. Where? It's a town called Whittier. Sounds familiar. There's a uh, there's a few people that came out of Whittier. Yeah. I think Tom Wade spent a little time there. Nice. Uh, Nomar Garcia Parra. He was good. Yeah, I lived. Uh, I lived in Massachusetts uh, in the nineties. <laughs> yeah, I think he was. I think he's a Whittier guy. Oh, cool. uh, Richard Nixon has like his child at home here. There's a lot Probably of people there. Oscar De La Hoya. Wow, there's there's a lot. There's a lot in Whittier. I feel like we yeah. try to make connections yeah. sometimes on the podcast, and I I feel inspired to get uh, at least Nomar and maybe Tom Waits on. Sure. Nomar is probably done. I think he'd have a hard time getting Tom on. Probably. Yeah, and mi- mixing his voice might uh, be a, a whole nother bunch of difficulties. So. Yeah. You guys ever heard those things that Tom Waits and Bob Dylan sent to each other? I think so- someone just sent me one of those. Yeah. Like a like, tape recording? Yeah. No. I, I don't know what it's for, really. I just It was interesting talking about yeah. songs a lot. Something. yeah somebody sent me like an outtake or one of the recordings and it's like it sounded like it it was like fake but it was real 
Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember what it was now, but it was it was one of the Dylan ones. And anyway, like Dylan, Radio Hour or something like that. I don't know. Sounds awesome. We we aspire to that level of uh of ambiguity of whether we're we're being serious or, or if this is satire. Perfect. Yeah, I looked up where Whittier is on my phone while we were uh, talking. <laughs> I don't think I've been there exactly. It's not like a like for me to get to the freeway to go to like downtown LA. It takes me like twenty five minutes. Yeah, it's like literally in a box of like four freeways, and it's just like right in the middle. For so, LA, that's like better than anywhere else. That's quicker than anyone else can get around LA. Well, I mean. It, at least to the freeway and then to the free from the freeway to LA. It's <laughs> oh, I see. Minutes. I was just out there in March. Actually, I'm wearing my LA Marathon t shirt from March. Figured for this occasion. Perfect. That's probably the qu- quickest way to get around. That was awesome. It was, uh, you know, really inspiring. 25,000 people running around. Good weather for a run. I don't think I could handle the, um, the intensity of the crowd <laughs> <laughs> well it's a funny crowd uh you get like, like well, well just the amount like twenty five thousand seems like i don't know if there's anything that twenty five thousand is like worth warranting you know yeah it, mostly it was really well done like they did a, i think maybe la is probably used to big crowds except around the finish line which you run by twice which is in century city um they somehow like stopped caring about keeping people off the roads <laughs> and so like everybody collapses around you and there's just like a two-person wide strip to run through that that actually feels very unsafe <laughs> it's i mean it, it sounds about right that they would just drop the ball right at the very end but yeah um but they mostly do good and it's mostly an interesting crowd i think guy what clark might have written a song about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> he sure did yeah I, so Dave, you thrive off the the energy of the crowd. I feel like, um, but Tim, you said you're not much of a runner, but you are a hiker, and I, a lot of my running resembles hiking to the uh, to the uninitiated. If you see me running in the woods, you might mistake it for walking or or hiking even. Yeah. But what what type of uh, what type of what type of hiking do you like to do? Uh, simple, basic, just. Uh... I don't even know if it's considered hiking. I don't know what the the definition of hiking is, but it's outdoors. Yep. And um, it's on dirt. Mm-hmm. And hills, so I guess it's considered a hike. There's like a kind of like a nature preserve by my house that's mm-hmm. um, undeveloped. Like there's not, not really any, um, like you're not supposed to be there. But oh, yeah. it's just this huge open place that I think they used to drill for oil there. They can see some old kind of like uh, just like metal piping and stuff around. Um, and there's like roads that are all like washed out, like very, you know, maybe six feet wide roads or something. So I don't know if trucks are going up there. But um, it's just a cool place, just kind of untouched. There's no like signs anywhere that say like, you know, this is this, or welcome to such and such. It's just kind of like a like this raw little piece of land. I read a book about those types of places once. I'll have to look it up and remember the title. But but yeah, these like forgotten spaces that just nobody like would consider, and they're just kind of out there. Like they they talk about like the strips in between highways, like where you'd be shocked to like see a person. Right? They're just these like unruly forgotten places and there's also these places in europe where they the like water dried up um and now there's just these like uh graveyards of of ships like you can find these big ship skeletons i feel like i see that before over there yeah yeah kind of reminds me of that yeah it's nice so i'm sure at some point it'll get developed because i mean there's houses all around it Mm -hmm. i don't know who owns like maybe the city doesn't own the land i don't know who owns it but um i've been kicked off a few times peacefully they were nice about it but um 
yeah, it's kind of just like a nice little sanctuary. Who did this and with what authority? <laughs> What's that? Who, who kicked you out and with what authority? I should have asked, but I'm a very non-confrontational person. I was just like, okay. Sorry. If they were nice about it, <laughs> okay. I'll, just, sure. I'll go. But um, I don't know. He was in like a white truck. He's bigger than me. He looked yeah. legit. <laughs> he looked like, you know, he wasn't like, he wasn't mean, but he wasn't nice. He was just like, hey, you got to go. And I was like, I don't know. Okay. You think he okay. could have caught you if you were running instead of hiking? No, because I know that place very well. And uh, he couldn't really follow me on a truck. But I usually have my dog with me and he's off the <laughs> leash. And um, I wouldn't abandon my dog like that. No, no, no. We wouldn't suggest that. Um, and I'm not even trying to convince you to run although you're our second guest ever who is a non-runner and the first one we did spend a lot of the episode trying to convince her to run <laughs> um, i would love to run i just haven't done it in so long oh I'm afraid to i don't know i'm like, <laughs> like afraid well maybe we okay maybe we will try to convince you that maybe that maybe that's the format we take with uh non-runners on a on a non-traditional running podcast uh, and and before we forget, though, we should do the, the segment of the podcast that we always almost forget to do, which is where we ask our, our guest to introduce themselves. And uh, so if you could tell us your name and anything else you want to tell us about yourself, but it, you don't have to say anything else if you don't want. Okay. My name is Tim Hill from Whittier, California. Um, play music. That's about it. <laughs> pretty good i like that i've been uh we've been spinning a lot of the music recently we made we made one of your songs our song of the week and i think i guess this is kind of the first time we've had uh, a guest on who who performed the song of the week the same week as the song is that right trevor actually i think possibly our second um another la musician brendan edder oh yeah brendan edder and ensemble sort of like minimalist sort of jazz composer kind of okay. you might like the vibe actually if you're not familiar because there's what? well your music is very different it's got a similar sort of mellow sort of mood uh to it yeah. but brendan might have come on a week after we featured this this song so so yeah, yeah we'll, we'll call this a first well yeah so our song of the week this week was what did we choose paris texas this is so interesting i'm i'm interested because the song is pretty old by now it's i don't know maybe five or six years old mm -hmm. but because i i put out that first record and then i put out another record that didn't do well so is i'm curious giant? To, huh giant yeah i'm but i'm curious why paris tech like why do people like that song it, it is one of your more popular songs though right it is it's maybe the most popular i'm just curious as to why hmm. like in a in a just generally curious positive kind of like i don't think it's a bad song i'm just wondering why that one i mean it's such a down it's like such a down song oh. you know yeah and it's such so like the recording so funky and maybe those are all the things that people like about it but we attribute some amount of this to the the algorithm that that would have served it up possibly um uh -huh. we had to discover your music somehow and i think i heard the the title track first and fell in love with that um and i did want to ask you about the lyrics to that because those just repeat in my head and uh and, and i'd love if you could just say the lyrics because i don't know i don't know if i quite heard them which right. one uh to pay a door um uh, at the very end oh that's um that's a george harrison song 
Is it? Okay. It sounds uh, so much like like a George Harrison song. <laughs> You'd have to ask George for the lyrics, Trevor. He would he would he would know that. Just the just the vocals though, right? Like the the whole slide thing. Yeah. Uh well I mean that tracks all instrument there's you're talking about just the part at the end. Yeah, yeah, just just the that's, only singing on the song. Yeah, that's from a song called Far East Man. It's also I, written, I, co-written by Ronnie Wood, actually. Far East yeah, I was just Man. about to say, I wasn't sure who who takes the credit on that. But it's on Ronnie Wood's album, too, I think. Yeah, it's on his uh, second or third solo record. I love that. That was just me and my buddy Sam tr- <laughs> trying to um, get the harmony Mm-hmm. right because we were playing we had like started this like just cover band kind of uh called roscoe's band so he was just we were that was just like an iphone recording <laughs> i just wanted was... to like i don't know i mean that's this it just, and i just threw it on at the end because i was just being weird but um Oh, it's yeah. a great! It's a great move. That that actually, that's funny. That used to be my answer if people asked me Beatles or Stones. I would say Far East Man, because uh, <laughs> it was the best cop out I could think of. Yeah, um, but I don't even know the lyrics to that. Just that he's a Far East Man. <laughs> that's the only part that's I know awesome. too. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, it's funny that I you said something like that. <laughs> it's funny that you said um, Paris, Texas feels like it is a downer because. Um, and to answer your question about why do people like it, I th- I think that a lot of the appeal, and I don't know the words to it, I, I realize, but I, I think it's got like a really like good vibe. Like it doesn't feel like a downer, maybe if you don't know what it's about. Like it almost feels like it's got that kind of vibe that, I don't know, people go for maybe in certain kind of like Neil Young songs, you know, like a mellow my mind kind of vibe. Yeah. Um. So that might be, the, I mean, that might be the appeal. That might be part of what I find appealing about it. Okay. Definitely but, got the, the Neil, Neil Young harmonica styling vibe. I feel like there's different. I don't know. I mean, you know a lot more about this than than I would, but I feel like there's very distinctive harmonica playing, and and that has a sort of Neil Young flavor to it. Yeah, he's very deliberate with his um, melodies. But, you know, not like you know dealing with just kind of kind of like <laughs> yeah. Crank on it. Yeah. Honk that thing. <laughs> which, which is something I always loved with Neil Young, which is really deliberate melody hang lines. Hit hang on those notes. Yeah. I mean, for me, the Paris, Texas runs uh for me because I I like that drawn out deliberate deliberateness. It's it's a it's one of the longer songs, I think, on the album. Um right. which people don't long. usually listen to, you know. Yeah. It seems like you know, a two and a half minute song. I was just curious. I mean, I'm glad that people love it. I love it still. But well, we we cool. we review yeah. we don't we review songs based on whether they run or not. And I ran to it today, so I can confirm it does run. And it so for maybe it's a lot of runners listening to it <laughs> over and over on their playlist. Um, but it I think another a running song. I don't know. It was kind of chill uh, for running, you know, like if you're trying to settle into a groove, like not trying to like if you're trying to run a long distance, you you do want a longer song. Um, do you prefer like. Like a song like that, something mellow, or do you kind of do you get into like. Like a headbanger when you're running or like is it change? It changes from runner to runner. I, I feel like I'm usually more into high energy stuff. And when we were preparing for this episode, I felt bad that we picked such an, an old song as song of the week. So I listened to moon landing all the way through. But, oh, yeah. um, although unfortunately I didn't run to it, but um, moon landing is your, your latest record, right? Yeah. And I feel like that's the kind of, have, did you listen to it, Trevor? I've listened to it. I haven't run to it. But I was going to say, it feels like the kind of record. record that would, that yeah. Run. Kind of thing you would run to. I like stuff that occupies the the time and space a bit when I'm running because running's not always fun, you know. Some of it's just, and you want to sort of lock into something. And for me, it's uh, I like I like those those types of vibes. Um, 
a little more ambient instrumental more ambient i'll like a i'll like something that you know sort of occasionally pick me up if i need it type of thing but um not not steady i i couldn't run to steady upbeat stuff although some of our musician runner special guests actually multiple have like alejandro escobedo like was the first and i think maybe sam allen was the second but they they both referenced acdc as, as like their running music which is very uh sort of like you'd think maybe traditional like yeah i think would run for most people i feel like that's what i think i would have i would need to listen to to run and then i would hate it and then i would stop running <laughs> <laughs> never run again and never run again well i mean like when i hike because i'll hike for a while i'll try and do like an hour or two um mm -hmm. and i like uh i like to listen to a lot of ambient stuff like a lot mm -hmm. of variety so. oh uh, yeah we had almost, a... there's i just downloaded uh his app a couple weeks ago called bloom have you guys ever heard of that he know has his own app yeah i didn't know i i, I think i have to get that it, it's, it's funny we were just two i think it was two episodes ago we had um bobby daniel bass player from broken gold on and we were talking about running to brian eno music for airports <laughs> airports yeah i yeah i don't know i don't know how it would translate running or hiking if there's much of a difference but this app that he has it's like um it's like a generative music app so you can there's a, a like a few different kind of templates and yeah. it's you'll have like you can t tap the screen you know make some notes and then if you leave it it'll like turn itself into this just ever looping ever changing thing so you never hear the same thing twice it's like impossible or you could just gen start it and it'll just generate this piece and it'll just go as long as you keep the app open that's wild but it's like yeah it's a really nice thing especially like for hiking when you're out in nature yeah sometimes a song can really take you out of your element but then complete silence doesn't really help either but you could just kind of have this like elongated bell sound yeah kind of bouncing in your ears yeah but you can't be like playing a tibetan bowl the whole time you're walking around so <laughs> you, you, you need something else to <laughs> do it for you you could but i feel like you'd end up like, on the internet yeah I, i'd rather not i guess i guess i could um i like to i, I gotta get that that sounds cool as hell <laughs> Definitely it's great cool. i put it on in the mornings and just do like a couple clicks yeah and, you know it just just kind of occupy is the space yeah you know music can be so it's crazy with the amount of music that you have at your fingertip it can just be so overwhelming yeah i yeah all i do is um i yeah i have spotify you know and i and but all i do is listen to the same couple of bill callahan songs over and over anyway <laughs> it's either that it's like yeah it's still neil young it's still um you know whatever classical record you know it's like it's so hard to to dig like to dig for some reason and yep. find something new yeah no i find myself repeatedly repeatedly listening to the same yo yo ma plays bach on a company album <laughs> like that's maybe just... really need anything. i mean what's better than that yeah exactly well that's what it is once you've got that it's hard to find things um that are better uh so when i was digging through your that catalog one thing i found that i thought was so cool is you did this live i think it was a live session for somebody i can't remember what it was called the lagniapi sessions is that what it was called land i think it's pronounced uh land yeah. you covered two of my favorite things that i never thought i'd hear covered in the same place which is uh warren zevon's uh, accidentally like a martyr <laughs> and then uh eric Satie. yeah that's I mean, which are two two things i listen to all the time and uh you don't usually hear in the same place that's great. That makes me so happy. Yeah, yeah but, and then there was a third thing on there that I don't listen to, and it was what was it? Uh, Awahuapa Panky? Is that what it is? I'm not. 
entirely sure how to say i mean you could throw like an accent on there and be like at the huapa or something like that that sounded, <laughs> that sounded great <laughs> you're from argentina so i don't know how the um you know their accents different and stuff like that yeah. but his music is you know i love i love that kind of stuff that just kind of solo classical guitar stuff yeah that was it well that was a great little three song session what 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 was that? And did they just say play whatever you want? Yeah, pretty much. It's um Aquarium Drunkard. Are you guys familiar with that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um Trevor is. They're, so they're, they're, blog. they're, they're blog, right? Yeah. They're based out of LA. So they just do those sessions every now and then. They'll hit up an artist or whatever and ask for you know, anywhere from two to four covers usually like coincides with like a release so like when giant came out mm -hmm. they did the landing up sessions and and then some i mean those songs were already recorded i didn't record them specifically for that they were just songs that i had done in my room cool. from a range of well actually i think the sati piece i had recorded it for the giant record but didn't put it on there which uh, Sati did you do? The the Nocian number one. Nice. Th thank you for saying that because I didn't want to mispronounce three things in <laughs> in one topic. I don't secret. think I don't think it's an actual word. Like he made but, it up. I think it's made up. Okay. Uh, but from what little I know of French, I think it's pronounced no see it in the moon. Okay. Like it's you know, it's just like the darker version of the really famous the gymna gymna petty. Gymna petty. <laughs> yeah. I was in France last year speaking French so poorly, so I'm <laughs> I don't even want to attempt any of these right now. Yeah. But yeah, no, he's amazing. That that's a great choice, uh, and yeah, something I didn't expect to to pop up. You know, I mean, that's the best thing you could hear. You know? Yeah, don't get it. I think to do like some Neil Young covers or something. But... That's too. That's too expected. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, there's so much. I mean the the Pyador stuff and the Giant stuff. It's kind of like, kind of just where I was at that time and. And that's just the stuff that took off. And that's how people would maybe know me or not know me. But there's so much more like, you know, from the moon landing stuff and, you know, classical music. And I got libraries full of electronic music and ambient, you know, that's just, yeah. Uh, that's just what I, my name's kind of attached to. But there's lots of stuff I like to do. That's cool. Yeah, I was, well, I listened to. I didn't make it all the way through Giant, although I, I would like to say the song Calico runs. Love Field is a garden where we bury our seeds and how it's grown, filled with misty dreams. But I just wanted to mention that real quickly so I could edit in a snippet of the song before we uh, <laughs> move on and. And say what made you want to like yeah what what inspired moon landing since it's just such a it's so different you know where it's and where'd that come from kind of um well i got it i mean i like space i like i sit and watch like youtube videos on space a lot <laughs> That's cool. uh, you do. uh i i got a telescope for christmas last year so i would spend a lot of time outside at <laughs> at night I sound like such an old man um I, yeah i mean that's just what i do i don't i don't go out anymore you know i just sit with my dog and my telescope and uh but i don't i mean yeah it wasn't like a new thing that hit me like oh i need to i should try something different you know i've got all kinds of things but i just bought this new synthesizer and was excited and cool. I, I can do i can do a lot of stuff and like if I get inspired, I can like record a lot in like a, a short frame of time. So, I mean, that was like two days of just messing around with the synthesizer and 
I was like, all right, that's done. Like by like the third day, I was like, I don't want to do it anymore. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm over this. That phase is over. Do you think you'll be doing more stuff like that or you got it out of your system? Um, I have some more. Another one that I just finished, I don't know, a couple of days ago. I don't know if, when or how that would come out. The, I had put out that EP, the Shades of Green EP, last, late last year. But that's going to be turned into a full length. Oh, nice. I'm currently getting pressed right now. So there'll be a okay. vinyl for that. Um, which is a little more on the ambient, kind of moody, jazzy, neoclassical side, I guess. Cool. Yeah. The, the, the other thing Moon Landing reminded me of that it either maybe you know, or if not, maybe you'd like. I, I heard about it on another podcast. It might have been like Radio Lab or something. And they were talking about how the guys on the Apollo mission to the moon each were able to bring some music. And, yeah. And Neil Armstrong brought this record of like, that he loved of like music for the moon and it's like it's like 1950s theremin music <laughs> yeah it was either that or like country and western that i think some of the other astronauts brought but yeah one of the other guys claimed, 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 claimed he brought crazy. fly me to the moon <laughs> but uh, people say maybe he made that up or maybe that's what <laughs> right. yeah was i mean that seems like a very like age appropriate like time appropriate joke yeah yeah exactly it's like it's hard to tell whether that's serious or not because that he could have but you know but also that's right on time so it's funny i mean there's that that brian you know record apollo because they did that documentary uh i think in like the 80s maybe that he did the music for about the apollo mission yeah. and there's all the like all that footage and stuff like that but he was saying yeah, that a lot of the astronauts had brought country western. So he had kind of integrated the, that into some of the soundtrack music. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Because that's what they liked because they were, I don't know, yeah, military still. guys from the South. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Cool. Makes sense. Just just give him um, Mr. Spaceman by the birds. Yeah. <laughs> or Rocket Man. I don't know if Rocket, well, the song obviously wasn't out then. but Oh, yeah. I know I like thinking about like space music from the early days of space exploration. Yeah, I like like the the futurism from that time where they they're like this is we got it. This yeah. is what the future's like and then it's it's just some random theremin concept album <laughs> Martians uh yeah. Yeah. I I I guess I... not too different than today. I mean that's kind of what we still do just as humans. Eno must have been so stoked when he got the gig to make music for the <laughs> for the Apollo documentary. Tim, what if I was at Eno must have been so stoked when he got that gig making music for the Oh yeah. Right. Well, would if so, if, if someone asked you, would you make music for a running documentary? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I think it would I work. Would, what I would love to do is make music for something other than being like an artist. I, I think that kind of like interest has kind of passed me by a little bit of being like the guy on stage but i love to make music and i think that would be so cool so whether it's running or space or whatever i mean there's like so many things i could pull from you know do you, do you uh did you ever watch or or listen to uh grizzly man richard thompson did like solo guitar soundtrack to this documentary called Grizzly Man about a guy I've that seen, went out to, to live with the Grizzlies. It's, I've seen Grizzly Man, but I can't even picture or can't even imagine the soundtrack. I also go back and watch it. Yeah, yeah same. Uh, same. I, I've yeah, seen it, but I can't. I can't think of what the music is. All I can hear is that guy's voice. I can yeah. like, see you doing something, something like that. I feel like it. It would. It would fit. I mean, I would love to, whether or just like maybe like a low budget Western or something, or uh, like Neil Young's score for Dead Man. Yeah, yeah, exactly, something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. Hopefully, or, hopefully, Jarmusch is listening. <laughs> Our really, listeners uh, are taking down notes about all these obscure ambient and uh, uh, sort of oddball soundtracks uh, from the past. 
60 or so years. Yeah. I, wa- <laughs> I walked by Jarmouche on New Year's Day once. Uh, that's like a New York City thing. That, that's something that just wouldn't happen in L.A. You walked by him? Yeah, like on the street, like in opposite directions. And then what happened? Did anything happen? No, it just <laughs> I registered who it was afterwards. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> he I mean, sticks out, you know? I mean, he really he yeah. stands out. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of all you really want. You could risk saying something to someone like that. and Yeah. You know, you don't know how they're going to react, especially I, someone like him. No, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't stop him on the street. Not my style. Maybe if he was walking with John Lurie or something. That might be hard to pass up. Um, if it was just John Lurie by himself. I feel like John would be cool. Yeah. Maybe if he was like in a bar. I used to hang out at a bar in that neighborhood that a lot of people like that would show up at. Um, Where do you guys live in New York? I just moved. I just moved on June 1st to Chinatown. Okay. Which is awesome. But um, I was living like in the West Village. Okay. I'm not super familiar. My sister lives in New York, but she lives in like deep Brooklyn. Oh, nice. I lived in in Brooklyn for 10 years, but not that deep. (laughs) No, she's in like, she lived out by Coney Island for a long time. Oh, yeah. And... Now she's even like not even by the water. She's just I don't know. She works at like a bakery out there. Cool. Mm-hmm. And, um, I've never seen her place, but she, she's like, yeah. There's nothing like cool around it. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, it's probably cool in its own way, but it's not a not a tourist destination, right? Yeah. I, right now I'm in the Lower East Side, but I'm in a hotel. I'm here for work. I actually live outside Boston. <laughs> well, there you go. But but yeah, it was just was just out there. I grabbed a I grabbed a slice. There's a lot of activity. It's part of town. Hot. How is it in LA? Is it it's probably not hot and gross like it is here. It's probably perfect. It's I mean it's warm. It was like 89 today. Mm. It's, it's yeah. relatively dry too. It's not like I know New York can get pretty brutal. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a little yeah. rough. And then and then Chinatown gets some extra intense. <laughs> smells i think although trevor i didn't realize you were so close (laughs) you're probably only a few blocks away yeah we should go meet up after this okay let's do it (laughs) i'd invite invite you out as well but (laughs) you're farther away no i don't think i could get on a plane anytime soon again okay well okay we do this on a timer we're winding down on time so is there wondering if it was my it was that was just my computer saying that's enough or Oh, I don't know. Can you get? I don't. Can you guys see the timer? I thought. I thought only I could see it. Yeah, uh, I can actually see it this time. It's oh. I usually can't, but it's it's the constraint uh, imposed on us by the free version of Zoom that we we uh, decided is part of our it's part of our our thing that we do here. It's part podcast. of our aesthetic. Yeah. Otherwise, we could just talk ambient music for God knows how long. Sure. And I would. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of Brian Eno ambient albums that we could just go through them all one at a time uh, and rank them as far as which one runs the best. Well, real quick, yeah. your top top uh, running ones. I'd go number one at ambient. Top Brian Eno record. What is that? Top Brian Eno record. Well, probably music for airports, but then um, I like uh, taking Tiger Mountain by Strategy, which I know is not ambient. And then uh, I like. Um, like those early ones too, and other yeah, worlds. yeah. I mean that one's good too. What about what about you, Tim? Do you have a favorite? <laughs> I'd probably go with the Apollo one, but um, more recently, he put out one with his brother called Mixing Colors. That's uh, cool. yeah, it's very very uh, very pretty. I think it's like most of like Roger Eno's compositions, but then like like brian did the it's kind of sound design of like what the notes would sound like you know so so it's kind of like uh kind of piano sounding it's just really interesting but really basic there's not much to it but that's it those two nice well we should plug i'll I'll plug your fellow la musician um Brendan Etter that we mentioned earlier. You should check out Cape Cod Cottage on your next hike. It's a pretty cool concept. What is it? Uh, Cape, Cape Cod Cottage. Um, Cape Cod? 
Cape Cod Cottage. It's a Cape concept. Cod. It's a concept album where he becomes retired dentist Edward Blankman, uh, who in his in his uh, in his post work uh, life out on his his retirement on Cape Cod records a jazz concept uh, album. That's sort of the 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 story behind it. Uh -huh. But it's pretty ambient, pretty cool. That was it's, great. I, it's pretty, I just think to my library, so nice. It's pretty, pretty great. Good. All right, guys, we got a uh, we got thirty four seconds left. Anything else we think um, the world needs to know about any of the important topics we've discussed? Tim, anything you want to plug? Probably not. Um, do I have anything I want to plug? No, okay. life's pretty quiet, cool, you know. That record will be out, I think, this year. So, looking forward to that. But yeah, other than that, just chilling. Can't wait to hear it. Thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks for having. Me. This is the Power Motion Picnic Hour. Ah, uh, thanks so much, Tim. That was a really awesome discussion. I I totally love that. That was incredible. Thank you, Tim. So great to have you on. Yeah, what a cool what a cool episode. We we cover a lot of topics we don't always cover and as we've done for maybe three or four weeks in a row we talked about Brian, you know. We have. Yeah. <laughs> we are we are quickly becoming quite Brian Eno centric. Um in the time since recording with Tim uh and and now recording this, I actually downloaded the Bloom app. Um Brian Eno's ambient music generation app um, oh, sweet then to check out on my run tomorrow which is what you did while i was walking over to your hotel as i learned during our interview you were just a 20 minute walk or 15 minute walk away from my apartment that, that's right so a lot of first uh first 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 uh artist on for for their own song of the week um first time we're recording in the same room yeah it's pretty exciting Quite exciting. And so I guess now we should talk running. Talk running. So <clears throat> by this point, I mean, even by this point upon recording, uh, it's rather old news. Um, but as as we do on our on our podcast, which which is ours to do what we want with, um, <laughs> we are we are reporting some news well after the fact. And and by the time this is released, it will be even further after the fact. But we had a big uh Big ultra race recently. Uh, oh, some might say the 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 most famous in all of all, all of the U.S. Uh, the Western States 100. And we made some predictions for that. We did make predictions. Uh, two of two of three, or technically four, we we got right. Hey, not bad. Yeah. Not, not bad. Not bad for uh, inexperienced predictors. That's right. So. Um, as 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 foretold by the Power Motion Picnic Hour, Jim, popular runner Jim Pergolesi, indeed uh, did not start. Um, Katie Shy did win the women's race Woo. Um, in a phenomenal performance, and uh, had a little chatter in the mailbag afterwards, which was really nice. And um, uh, she did not place top ten; she did place thirteen. Uh, so that was just a, just a minor minor miss um special guest jeff colt however did not have a great race uh ended up dnfing had to had to tap out it happens it happens it uh it happens to the best um, of us but but congratulations everybody and, and congratulations to us for being so great at predicting these things yeah congratulations great predictions and <laughs> um final piece of reporting we we had our our top fortissimo tyler green nice Top fortissimo overall. How uh, how old was he? Forty. Okay, I think yeah, that makes sense. The fastest fortissimo runner is probably usually a forty year old runner. He, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, it'll uh, be interesting. We'll have the uh, the data analyst in turn do a little work on that on that question. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll crunch some numbers and and try to verify that with uh, with some actual statistics instead of pure speculation. Yeah, but great performance. Another just solid for decent performance. Top ten. Um, well done, Tyler. Oof, yeah, well done. Way to go. Yeah. Wow. 
exciting race recap um yeah. what else should we talk week in running how is how's your week in running yeah i had a great week in running <laughs> um fortunate enough to be up in vermont for for some of my week in running um did did some of that that good old hike running uh up some mountains and down some mountains and uh got a lot of elevation in for the week which felt nice. good and uh the running's been great recently <laughs> I, I did talk recently in my bit of a running rut about how I I was I was always sort of neutral on my weeks in running and whether it was good or bad previously I'd just say it was a good, yeah it was a good week in running uh, this it's been a pretty good pretty good streak of uh, of running weeks over here nice the good. rut is the rut is over yeah I'm out of the rut I'm, uh, I I fell in love with running again oh that's exciting I'm sure. Our listeners are excited to hear it. I know I'm excited to hear it. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I mean, you know, and if if you don't, that's fine. We're we're transitioning nicely to a Brian o, Brian Eno themed podcast, so that's right. we'll, we'll survive even if you decide you don't like running anymore. We appeal to everyone, so long as you like either running or ambient music. Yeah, exactly. That's that's a large segment of the population. Yeah. How was your weekend running? My weekend running was good uh i did a nice five miles today in the treadmill testing out our, our song of the week and uh some other tim hill music which was really enjoyable um you know who else has had a good week in running is our, our very own female gear shed testing correspondent she's recently begun training for the new york marathon which will be her second marathon and she's actually sitting in the room with us maybe she wants to give us a little update about how her this is this is, this is very exciting how her training went today hi guys yeah, I guess I've, I've started slowly. Uh, I'm working, I'm like running with this running app uh, called Runna that I actually really, really like. I used it for my last marathon. Is that from Boston? I don't think it is. I'm not sure. Sounds like it, but maybe, yeah, that's the, just the pronunciation. But anyway, please continue. Oh, oh, I see. Yes. Good joke, Dave. That was great. We have a lot of listeners in, <laughs> in Boston, so you got to kind of you know give a little shout outs for them. Yeah, no, totally. But like, I think I said, so because I've completed one marathon already with the app, they ask you to like put in, you know, those specs and then what your next marathon should be. So I did pretty good with my first marathon. So I put all that in. So now it wants me to run the New York marathon at like four hours and 30 minutes. <laughs> And I'm I'm definitely feeling the heat because all of the all of the newer uh, trainings are like some of them are way too hard for me. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like the first one is like a tempo thing that's uh -huh. like makes you run super freaking fast. So I don't know. I have not completed one yet. <laughs> well, it's good that you've you've brought this up on Pod because hopefully our our listening audience can chime in and give you some uh, some advice. Um, until we hear from them, I'll start off with some of my <laughs> un unknowledgeable suggestions. And I'm just going to say you're going to need a cool pair of shoes. Definitely. Yeah. But now it's nice to have this on the record, the goal of a 430 New York Marathon in November. Oh, oh no. Yeah. So we'll, we'll make sure to check back with you and update our listeners about your, your training progress. So, you, know, you know what I'm going to say? You just got to slow it down. Slow it down out there. That's the key to running faster. <laughs> that's a, that is what I tell people when they say, like, what's the secret to running? I'm like, just run real slow. Run real slow. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's our advice here. Yeah. Well, that's good. That was some much needed real running talk this week. We, we fit it in just yeah. barely. Just barely got it under the wire. Um, all right. Well. I don't know. Are there any Eno albums we forgot to mention? I mean, probably, probably many. I I was struggling uh, off the top of my head to come up with the names of of good ambient Eno albums. So I went right to the early ones. I do like Eno's uh, sort of glam period too. Um, here come the warm jets. Here come the warm jets. We didn't mention that uh, one. It's classic. Taking Tiger Mountain by Strategy, which you mentioned. Another Green World still has shades of that, and then and then from there, it's basically it's basically ambient. That's our guarantee here on the Power Motion Picnic Hour. We'll name every Eno album we like twice. <laughs> in, in case you didn't write them down earlier, those are the ones we mentioned. And uh, and let's not forget about Cluster in Eno. Cluster in Eno, music from airports. 
Yeah. Well, um, I, I guess, is there anything else or did we cover everything? I think we've done it all. Okay. Well, I hope this recorded this experimental um, form of, of podcasting because I can't wait for everyone to hear it and to hear all the corrections come flying in the mailbag. And uh, yeah, until next time. Onward. Special guest, Tamil. This is the power. Mo-